From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Taking over a sheriff's office found guilty of racial profiling. How Paul Pinzone is building trust with the Latino community. Residency status isn't often the first thing on students' minds. How two lawmakers are devising a bipartisan solution, paving a path to citizenship for dreamers. And Arizonans are increasingly concerned about climate change. How some local lawmakers are calling on Senator Flake and President Trump to think about the issues beyond politics. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Tyler Finger. And I'm Blakely McHugh. Thanks for joining us. A new era of leadership at the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office is providing an opportunity for a fresh start with the Latino community. But as Patricio Espinoza reports, many are still unhappy and are expressing their views at a series of community meetings with MCSO. Patricio? Yes, in the past, court-mandated community meetings were managed by what's called a community advisory board and a court-appointed monitor. Now, a judge has given the new sheriff, Pinzon, permission to lead the effort. More than 300 people showed up to the first meeting under MCSO guidance, and the feedback was loud and clear. Seven years of racism, persecution, hate, intolerance. Now is the time it should change under the new sheriff. Sheriff Penzone wasn't there to hear the concerns firsthand, but told Cronkite News he knows there's work to be done. And I recognize that there is one you know, particular group that was, um, I'll just say it, that was, was mistreated by my predecessor. And I'm very sensitive to that issue. And there is one thing Raul Pina, a court-ordered community advisory board member, says the Latino community wants to have MCSO stop working with immigration authorities. Well, I would ask uh, the sheriff to really look into the, the, the faces of the families uh, and the children that are being impacted by the mass deportation force and say, you know, do you really want to be associated with that? Sheriff Penzone has already made changes. His department is no longer practicing what was called courtesy holds. It was deemed to be a violation of the Fourth Amendment, so I immediately stopped that practice. But those at the meeting insist that's not enough, because federal agents remain in the county jails, able to interview, detain, and deport detainees. We're also sensitive to the people in the community that are being impacted directly, uh, their families are being separated, uh, and then we're going to continue to say, you can terminate this arrangement today, and you refuse to do that. Are you legally bound to have the ICE? No, there's not a legal requirement, so but you I... you could say no today if you wanted to. I could, but I choose not to, and I choose not to, and I hope that, you know, that this is in totality, the statement, because there are people who have committed crimes who may be here um, unlawfully, and if another agency, law enforcement agency, has an interest in engaging them in a safe environment prior to them being released out to the street, I'm going to grant that opportunity. And the next community meeting is coming up next month where some Latino community activists say communication needs to be improved even sooner. They're asking for more Spanish language outreach and a professional translator at each meeting in the Brosca Center Patricio Espinosa, Cronkite News. They're called dreamers, the young, undocumented immigrants who were brought to this country as children, and their dream of citizenship got renewed backing from two prominent senators in Washington. Alex Valdez in our Washington bureau tells us about the latest attempt to protect the estimated 1.8 million dreamers in the U.S., tens of thousands of whom are believed to be here in Arizona. Yes, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham and Illinois Senator Dick Durbin want to make one thing clear about the bill that they introduced that would give DREAMers a path to citizenship. It's not about charity, they say. It's about doing the right thing for a specific group of uh, young, undocumented immigrants. We believe that those who were brought to the United States as children, have grown up in this country, have no criminal record, who are prepared to serve this country in a variety of ways should be given that chance to make America a better nation. That chance would come through their bill, the DREAM Act of 2017. It would give young immigrants who grew up in the United States a shot at permanent residence and eventually American citizenship. 
The senators say Dreamers currently live in fear of deportation with little to no chance of citizenship, which is why reform is needed to give hope to those who are brought here as children. Talking about people who've been here for a long time, not a short time, came here before they were 18, they haven't committed a felony, they graduate from high school or get a GED. But opponents of the bill say any type of amnesty to illegal immigrants would hurt Americans and, like previous attempts, will ultimately fail in Congress. Clearly the political genesis of the DREAM Act is that it's unrealistic to have any kind of amnesty for the 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States. That Ray says the DREAM Act of 2017 just opens the door to granting undocumented immigrants citizenship. The DREAM Act is simply the appetizer, but Americans reject the idea of amnesty. It's a radioactive issue. Dreamers would have to follow specific guidelines to stay and obtain legal citizenship under the bill. Both senators say that Dreamers will have to prove they could stay in the country. You can't stay here out of an act of charity. You stay here if you can prove that you're moving in the right direction. You can add value to our country. Both men have been pushing for immigration reform for over a decade. When asked about their chances now, with the president who has vowed to get tough on immigrants, Graham says he believes President Trump can go along with their sensible and bipartisan bill. Live in Washington, I'm Alex Valdez, Cronkite News. Climate change is not a partisan issue. We have to remember that there are no borders in the atmosphere. Today, two Arizona state legislators and some community leaders came together calling on Senator Jeff Flake and President Donald Trump to do more to protect the environment and the health of Arizonans. We need to remind uh, the politicians in Washington that they're here uh, representing the people and not corporations and special interests that are literally polluting our earth. At the press conference, Izela Blanc and Reginald Bolding, both Democratic state representatives, talked about how the rolling back of ozone protections is having a negative impact here in Arizona. They pointed to the record temperatures and the effect it's having on people's health, saying that it's only going to get worse. They're calling on Senator Flake because of his past voting history and a bill he's backing that would change ozone regulations. We do want to note we did reach out to Senator Flake to get his reaction today, but we haven't heard back in tonight. In it back in time for air tonight. With football season around the corner, so is the start of the academic semester. Coming up on Cronkite News, why ASU football coach Todd Graham says this new athletic facility will help student athletes in their education. And how national Native American games have grown have grown over the past 16 years. at the post office mailing something. I asked the clerk, how do they let you know if your son is wounded? 
it was very hard for me to form those words, but I just felt, I've got to know. I just felt so suspended in space and anxiety. And the man said, now, don't worry. They'll tell you. Sun Devil Stadium has undergone a massive overhaul over the last two years. It's a story we've been covering for months. And that's right, Tyler, but the newest modification just might be the most impressive. As Cronkite News reporter Tyler Paley found out, the new student athlete facility was designed with education in mind. ASU's new student athlete venue has caught a lot of slack on social media lately. Some saying that money could have been spent on educational resources. But Sun Devil football coach Todd Graham sees this facility as exactly that, a place for student athletes to learn. These players can come here and be in a facility that allows them to not only learn on, but off the field as well. Sports fans know football isn't just a physical game on the gridiron. It's just as much a mental game. ASU coach Todd Graham knows that too. That's why he helped design a new student athlete facility at Sun Devil Stadium that's conducive to learning. We recruit people that value uh, their intelligence, that value their education, that we believe the smarter player is the better player. The new roughly 100 and 19,000 square foot complex may be flashy and over the top to outsiders, but rest assured, its design was no mistake. This facility is going to allow players the opportunity to learn not as football players, but as student athletes. So we've made our meeting rooms from a technology and from a structure standpoint where we can make simulators out of our meeting rooms. So they're doing step throughs instead of sitting and listening to a lecture. That technology includes a video command center and dozens of iPads as Graham tries to bring his team into the future of learning. For him, it all boils down to putting his team in a position to win, both on and off the field. Take it from Manny Wilkins, his starting quarterback. It's something that symbols being successful. To be successful, you want to have successful things around you. And that success, Graham believes, begins in the classroom. He's here to teach these young players on and off the field. And it's ready just in time. ASU football season begins on August 31st at home against New Mexico State. Tyler Paley, Cronkite News. The Native American community has held a sporting event for the last 14 years. The Lori Piestua tournament originated in Tuba City and now takes place in different sports complexes across the valley. The tournament took place hosting Native American teams from around the country. Sarah Hattis went to the Friday's opening ceremony. At Cicero Preps Gymnasium in Scottsdale, athletes, coaches, and sponsors filled the gym to participate in the annual opening ceremonies of the Lori Paestua National Native American Games, the most prominent of their kind. Over 14 years after her death, Army soldier Lori Paestua's legacy is honored every year in a three-day sporting event known as the Lori Paestua Games. Lori was funny. She was good, a good athlete. She was a good student. She was in ROTC for four years. She was the top female athlete. Lori is the first Native American woman in U.S. history to die in combat. But before serving her country, she was an athlete. Fourteen years ago, the Arizona Sports and Entertainment Commission created this tournament to celebrate Lori through sports. Running, basketball, and I think we did softball. And those are three sports she did. That's how we started. The tournament has expanded to six sports and has been moved from Tuba City, Arizona to Phoenix, where teams from 94 tribes, 157 cities, 22 states, and three countries are represented. And every year it's gone up in attendance, sp spectators, and sponsorship. This year alone, we went from 88 basketball teams to 108 basketball teams in one year. According to the Arizona Sports and Entertainment Commission, this year's ceremony has been the biggest one they've seen yet. In the game's first year, there are only a mere 65 athletes in attendance. This year, there are 3,300. We hope that these kids, that they take it to heart, they can do it too. They can be in that position. They can excel. That, that's the amazing part of the Lori Piasso National Games. The tournament is the largest Native American competition in the country and is considered the pinnacle for Native American athletes where participants range from ages 2 through 95. I'm Sarah Hattis, Cronkite News.
flooding. Coming up on Cronkite News, how to make sure you and your home are prepared when extreme weather hits. longer will these storms stick around? Your full seven day forecast coming up. Heaven knows you're a dreamer. Don't hide it from anyone. Don't hide it from mistake if we say, oh, all war is hell. We all know the war is hell story. It is, but there's an enormously exhilarating part of it. Firefighters fought through floods in Apache Junction to rescue a driver trapped in a car with water nearly up to its hood. This morning, the National Weather Service issued a flash flood warning for Maricopa and Pinal counties. This drone video shows us footage of floodwaters in Apache Junction today. The streets are flooded throughout the town, and a closer look shows us how strong that current is. It's knocking down trees, and it's carrying them away. The National Weather Service says most flood deaths occur in vehicles and advises residents to turn around, don't drown. There has been flooding all across the state this morning. Crews wrapped up a large scale rescue of 17 hikers stranded by a flash flood in Reddington Pass just east of Tucson. Take a look at this video. The Pima County Sheriff's Department says 15 people, including four, a four year old, were airlifted out by a helicopter Sunday. But the remaining hikers stayed overnight and received food, water and blankets. They were eventually rescued by a helicopter as well this morning. Uh, the Sheriff's Department says this incident is a reminder of the dangers that flash flooding poses. And that's a prime example of the power that a monsoon storm can bring. And Tyler, when your home is in the pathway of that severe storm, major damage can occur. Emily Bloom joins us to talk about different forms of damage control. Yeah, guys, it's days like today when our homes are at damage, and unfortunately, many of us don't realize that we are at risk until it's too late. I had the opportunity to talk to two Valley women, and they are sharing some advice with us on how we can prepare for these monsoon weathers. For most of the year, home maintenance here in Phoenix is pretty easy, but when the monsoon rolls in, it can be a completely different story. Get prepared outside and inside so that not a lot of things bad happen to you and aftermath is to a minimum. Andrea Garcia knows firsthand just how powerful these storms can be. The overwhelming part wasn't that the water came up, it was that why isn't the water going away? You may remember almost three years ago, a Mesa neighborhood nearly destroyed following an intense monsoon storm. We just kept sweeping <laughs> back out to the street to try to not let it go into our homes. Garcia was one of the many victims of that flood, and years later, folks in that neighborhood are still making repairs. 
And call your local city if you see areas of your neighborhood that are bugged up when you notice that it rains. Garcia says if you see areas that fill up when it rains lightly, that's a red flag of areas that could become much worse when we really get hit by the monsoon. It's situations like these when having an emergency preparedness kit on hand can be so useful. Some bottled water, a uh, first aid kit, some light sticks that you just snap and then it's a light source. She also recommends flashlights, batteries, a wireless power source, and a portable charger for your phone. With all the dust and debris in the water, you may want to consider, not consider, but you may want to definitely change your air filters in the house. Because those are collecting all the dust and debris from that monsoon air. Now, of course, some situations are entirely out of our control, but it certainly doesn't hurt to overprepare. I mean, and that's that's the Phoenix summer for you. You're sweating one day and drenched in rain the next. Can we expect more rain over the next several days? We are going to have a little bit of a break uh, for the next couple of days, but round two is not too much uh, later. So our high for today of 95 degrees. We're currently sitting at 86 though here in the valley. Our humidity at the moment is 66 degrees, but this morning around 10 a.m. that humidity was up in the 80s. That is all that the precipit precipitation that we have been having over the weekend is really driving the moisture up, making for pretty muggy conditions across the valley and of course the state. We have got 79 in Tucson, 61 in Chilo, 76 in Cave Creek, and 95 over in Lake Havasu. And here in the valley, if you can even believe that, it's the end of July and we are almost all sitting in the 80s. 83 in Cave Creek, 81 in Superior, 86 in Coolidge, and 89 in Levine. Now taking a look at our satellite and radar, all of our activity for today, it's not over just yet. We are still looking at a chance of isolated thunderstorms, rain, lightning, even blowing winds through the remainder of the evening across the state. But as we head into tomorrow morning, this dry air mass from the north of Mexico is going to be moving up, pushing all of that moisture out of our state. And by Wednesday, we are looking at mostly sunny skies. Thursday, we bounce up to 107 degrees. We're gonna have a break in that monsoon weather through the remainder of your work week, but by week, but by the weekend, we are looking at round two. For Cronkite Weather, I'm Emily Bloom. Worldwide travel means plenty of photo opportunities. Coming up on Cronkite News, how you can take more than just a selfies on your next vacation. For those who want their scrapbooks to double as a portfolio, Cronkite News reporter Andy Krauss discovered a fine art travel photography class that shows students how to take pictures that tell a story. If you have your sights set on becoming a world-class photographer or taking pictures worthy of publication and gallery exhibition, Mark Edward Harris is your man. The award-winning travel photographer teaches amateurs how to add those extra elements to their pictures that turn them into something more than a simple tourist memento. Trying to get people to really look at the best way to capture their environment, to capture that fleeting moment, uh, was really the goal. Harris, who teaches his course in and around Los Angeles, 
begins with a slideshow lecture to illustrate the course's objectives that highlights the finer aspects of travel art. Students have the chance to practice what they learn during a two-hour visit to the Huntington Library and Botanical Gardens before returning to base camp to showcase their work through a basic Photoshop and Lightroom tutorial. Don't just pull up the camera and, and take that shot. You know, take a few extra seconds to really think of what the angle might be, how you'd frame that shot, and recognize that you can do almost anything you want with it digitally afterward. The classes collective admiration for a photograph's unique relationship to preservation and storytelling is what motivated them to take the course. And the key thing that photography does is it freezes a moment in time. I, and to me, I've never gotten over, the, and I never want to get over, the wonderment of that. You can love a million things in life, but then you have to define what you're passionate about. And I decided that I'm really, really passionate about photography. With an array of new skills at their disposal, everyone left the class eager to put them to the test wherever their exotic summer adventures may lead them next. In Los Angeles, Andy Krause, Cronkite fun. News. Right Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll follow an Arizona bee farmer as he readies his crop of pollinators for a business trip to California almond groves. That's on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Harry Srinivasan. On the next News Hour, where do Democrats go from here? We talk with Tom Perez, head of the DNC. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to our website, cronkitenews.azpbs.org.